Sally YouTube, welcome back to the Not Even French YouTube channel. Today we are tackling a very common problem for any French language learner, which is I understand French, but I can't speak it. Like I know the language, I'm listening to it, I'm reading it. It's all sort of coming together in my mind, but when I go to speak, it's gone completely forgotten. It's like I can't verbalize what's in my head. Now this is a very, very common situation to be in. So let's talk about an action plan, an action plan that I use to get over this hurdle because I was exactly in this point and it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating because you can genuinely understand everything and yet when you tell people that they're like, well, okay, sure, because when you speak, you're kind of speaking like a five-year-old and they don't necessarily give you credit or realize how close you are to really being fluent in French, right? To being conversational in French. You know, there's a lot that goes into actually producing the language rather than just being able to, you know, use input and receive and understand the language when you have time and you know actually converse um, and that's what it's all about right you learn a language so that you can connect with people so you can chat to people so that you can take part in conversations so let's talk about this super super important language learning skill and I'm going to tell you everything that I did to make that shift and change the game. Now, I know that the first thing that people say to you when you've got sort of everything in your brain but it just won't come out they're like well you've just got to talk to native speakers but how intimidating is that? I don't think people realize how intimidating it is to have a native speaker in front of you at their speed level and have to, you know, either slow them down or have them be very patient with you or find a native speaker. Like we don't, aren't all just based in France right now, right? So I think that advice is great advice, but it's not necessarily pragmatic okay so this advice is very much going to be centered around the things that you could be doing from the comfort of your own home even if you don't have a native French person in front of you how can you start speaking which is the whole point so let's get into it so the first point that I wanted to say is that you need a daily habit to support speaking in French and when I think about a daily habit I think about something quick that you can use on the go you know 10 to 30 minutes a day and to start flexing that muscle of practice because I promise you 10 minutes per day is going to be so much more powerful than three hour binge on a Sunday afternoon. Why? Because it builds the neural pathways in your brain. So neural pathways in your brain are getting built, the electrical signals are firing through them a little bit every day and it's getting stronger and stronger and stronger and more natural and easier for you. So the best thing for this in terms of that on the go, quick, let's just get it done are of course apps, but you need to have an app that is very much focused on speaking. So my recommendation here is the app called Speakly. Now I have done a whole video on Speakly before I did a review on that app. I really love it, but this is why I would recommend Speakly specifically. So Speakly was created by two polyglots who each speak seven languages and over the course of six years they studied language learners. You know why can some people speak 20 languages fluently and what they did was kind of compress those cheat codes into this app in terms of just teaching you the vocabulary that is most often used in the language and day-to-day conversation. So it cuts the fluff. It's not like Duolingo where you're learning sentences like, my dog cuts the strawberries. Like it's very, very practical, real, and focused, focused on the most common verbs, words, expressions that French people are actually using. And because the philosophy of this app is completely skewed towards having you join conversations as quickly as possible, it's actually been proven that it can accelerate your language learning by five times, having you go from zero to comfortable in a conversation in just three to four months if you're practicing for say 30 minutes a day, which is insane. It took me years to get to that point, even living in France. And what's really cool is that although you have that mix of that written exercise and vocabulary and, you know, spelling and speaking and listening, it really does cover off all the competencies. There are these real life live situations like, you know, a neighbor comes to your door and asks for a block of cheese or you're talking with a friend about their relationship breakup and you can actually sort of go back and forth 
practicing conversations as if that topic came up as if that situation came up you're actually able to figure out what you would say and it, it, it really does teach you it and you see it written there and then you say it and then you hear it back it reminds me of language learning you know as a baby it's sort of like it, it's like you see it and you and you observe it and then you hear it and then you try yourself and it tells you if it's a bit off it tells you if you missed a word or if you didn't pronounce something correctly and then you can go again and you get to try again and it's it's really that very natural language learning acquisition I would say and of course what's really nice is that your mistakes are corrected because you know even when you're speaking with a native speaker they may not always have the courage or like want to interrupt you or whatever that looks like and tell you that you made a mistake Whereas when it's just you in the app, you can make the mistakes, it will tell you and you get that real-time feedback. So I definitely recommend Speakly for your day-to-day -day practice. I am a Speakly partner, so if you check out the link down below, you'll get a seven-day free trial and you can test out the app that way. So really enjoy and integrate that into your daily habits. It's all about your habits. The second hack, or I mean, it's less of a hack, I would say, but something that you really need to work through in order to speak French and actually verbalize what you have in mind, it's a lot of mindset work. Okay, so what you're going to find is that when you go to speak French, you're going to have all of these destructive thoughts. I sound stupid. My accent sucks. I'm going to annoy people when I ask them to speak French with me. I'm going to make mistakes. I'm not perfect. Oh, screw it. Everyone speaks English anyway. This kind of self chatter is your brain trying to protect you from feeling embarrassed, humiliated, hurt, or any kind of pain, okay? Your brain wants to protect you. It has evolved that way to keep you safe, both psychologically and physically, okay? So it has evolved to have a threat detector, and if something could hurt you, like, you know, a lion over there that's about to pounce, it wants you to pick up on that very quickly. But it also does that for psychological things, because humans don't want to feel pain. We don't want to feel socially ostracized or like we're in the out group. We want to be in the in group, right? We Because that's safety. That's how we survived. Your brain will try to protect you. So what can you do when your brain is literally shutting down and not letting you play with things without feeling anxious, without feeling embarrassed and that kind of thing? You know, there's no easy answer to this but it is incredibly life-changing when you try to work through these things. So for example, you could write at the top of a journal page, okay, I want to speak French, but dot dot dot. I want to try speaking French with X person, but dot dot dot. I want to try speaking French at work, but dot dot dot. And just let yourself journal on all of the fears that come up. But I'm going to look silly. But I won't look competent at work anymore. But I'm going to show my weakness to my boss. But all of this stuff is going to come up. And what I want you to do is, is work through them, okay? So you need to reassure your brain. So for example, I want to speak French, but my accent is stupid. You would take that and then you would identify that. And then you would ask yourself, you know, is that true? Genuinely, is that true? Is it true or is it a story I'm telling myself? My accent is stupid might be a story you're telling yourself. You have an accent. That's right, because you're learning a second, third, fourth language. I have an accent when I speak. It's because I know another language. It's because I'm trying to better myself, to expand my mind, to connect across cultures. I'm learning a freaking other language. How cool that I have an accent and it's a story worth telling and people are gonna ask me where I'm from and it makes me interesting, okay? And have I ever judged people with accents before? I'm not thinking crappy thoughts about people with accents, so they won't think that about me. So what you do is you really start to tackle these one by one and reassure the brain even if you're speaking with an accent, it's okay. It's okay because you're learning a language and that's awesome. At the end of the day, you need to remember that you can't actually control what people think of you. Even if you think, you know, if you're scared of that perception, they're going to think I sound silly. They're going to think I'm dumb. They're going to think whatever. That's so out of your control. That's so beyond your control. All you can focus on is your mission, your why. There's a reason that you're learning this language and it might be to study abroad. It might be to connect with someone. It might be because you've married someone from another culture and you want to connect with their family more. Hold on to that. Your purpose, your why is so important and it has to be bigger than what you think people might be thinking about you. But most of the times, honestly, it's our inner critic just chatting away, keeping us down. So moving through that is one of the most important things you can do. Now, the next thing that I talk about is very, very pragmatic, and it's all around the way that we acquire and that we learn languages. So, so often, whether that's in school or, or whatever it is, the way we learn languages is actually quite passive. It's very much based on input. Okay, so it's us sitting quiet alone with a book and underlining things and looking them up in our dictionaries or, or grammar books or whatever that looks like. So we're taking in information 
Okay, we're reading, we're listening, we're watching French movies, whatever that looks like. And there's a lot of input. We listen to conversations and we try to understand what's happening, etc. So there's a lot of input based learning. Okay, whereas people who study languages, they've realized that what we need to effectively learn a language and learn it quickly and to get speaking is a ratio of about three to seven. So three being the input and seven being the output producing the language, formulating the language, speaking the language. And most people are learning the other way around, okay? Mostly input, very little output. But the thing is, is if you're absorbing all this stuff and you don't use it, and you don't activate it, it's not going to work. So this is why some of these following tips may seem a bit weird, may seem a bit, little bit silly, but they are going to work for you. So a big tip for me here is repeat back what you hear. So if you are watching French series on Netflix or you're watching some French YouTubers, repeat back what you hear. Yes, talk to yourself, talk to yourself. I know you're gonna feel crazy. It can be a whisper, okay? You wanna be just muttering away to yourself, but repeat back what you hear. So I'll be watching a French series and I'll take note of how they react to things. And I will say it back. Ah oui, carrément. Oui, c'est clair. On y va? Oh non, je m'en fous de ça. So I will take their little expressions, their little reactions, when I know what they mean, and I will say them out loud. I will repeat them back. So the person on the TV says, oui, c'est clair. I'll say, oui, c'est clair. And I'll actually imitate them because it allows your, your jaw, your muscles, your mouth muscles and your tongue to actually practice formulating things that you understand. And again, those beautiful neural connections are getting made as well. On that note, something that really helped me as well is actually turning my thoughts into French and muttering to myself out loud. So going around the kitchen, la cuisine, and saying, qu'est-ce que je vais faire manger? What am I gonna make to eat? And où est la fourchette? Where is the fork? Like those little mutterings that you have to yourself, try to change that into the other language even when you're going to open the fridge and again you say it out loud it's not just in your head being like okay le frigo you open it qu'est-ce qu'il y a dedans what is inside you know all these little thoughts that you have in your day-to-day -day experience do it in french and i know that can be overwhelming so i tend to do it in specific moments so for example i might do it when i'm cooking and I might say, okay, I'm gonna cook in French, but like just to myself, I might be listening to some French music and I might just say little things like, you know, just as I would naturally, I love the song. Ah, j'adore cette chanson. So you start just murmuring to yourself and getting used to and getting confident and getting fluid with speaking to yourself first and foremost. Another great trick here is to imagine that you have an imaginary friend and I use my cat sometimes, bonbon, and summarize your day. Talk about what you got up to that day or talk about a particular problem that you're having or something that your friend is going through. Try to chat to them. It can be, you know, an animal, it can be a teddy bear, it can just be literally an imaginary friend but practice talking about day-to-day -day things. Another thing with your imaginary friend is that you can watch an episode or something, again, or of a YouTube video, and if you've understood most of it, try to explain what it was about to your imaginary friend. Okay, if you could do a summary of this video just in two minutes, what was the general idea? This sounds crazy, I know, but it really, really, really works. Take it from me, someone who was too shy to speak and like regrets it so badly, this catapulted my language learning. Now this next tip comes from a friend. I admit that I have not actually tried this one myself. The next step really, we wanna start building up from speaking to yourself to speaking with other people and exchanging. And so uh, she suggested calling strangers, calling complete strangers, calling, you know, hotels, like, you know, putting $10 on your Skype credit and calling hotels and practicing, you know, day to day, asking people like, what hours are you open? Can I ask about something on the menu? Can you explain to me the check-in procedure for your hotel? Like whatever it is, but like actually practicing with businesses. I, I don't wanna to take too much of people's time, but this is like quite a fun hack as well. And otherwise, there are plenty of both online and in-person language swapping sites as well, where you can actually, you know, you get to speak in English, for example, to a French person and then speak in French with a French person and you're both there for the same goal. So no one's been annoyed, you're both there for the same thing. The rules of the game were clear from the beginning um, and those can be really uh, inclusive and enjoyable spaces and you can really meet some, some friends as well doing that kind of thing too. Of course something you can also do is some online language learning classes with native professors and small groups. I mean I've done that as well and that really helps as well to have a professional in front of you. For some reason making mistakes with a professional or you know giving it a go with a professional always feels slightly easier than like friends and family and things like that. 
out. I don't know why, but there's just that that mental block of, of not wanting to annoy people or, I don't know, let people down or, or have them feel, I don't know, embarrassed for you, whatever it is, like that, that crap we were talking about in our heads, you know, before. Um, there is something about, you know, taking those online group or private French classes that just allows you to interact with a professional French speaker without the pressure as well. If you have ever overcome the fear of speaking a language, I would love to hear from you in the comments. What are your tips, your tricks, your hacks? What got you to actually be able to start speaking and conversing and get you over that really that mental hump to be able to connect in another language? I would love to hear from you and hear what you did to make that happen. Otherwise, let me know which tip was your favorite. And for all of you out there who may be learning another language right now, sending you all the good vibes. It is so, so worth it when you can start connecting. Remember, it's not about perfection. We are aiming to be understood and to understand that's it that's all that needs to happen to be able to communicate so don't be too hard on yourself either and have fun with it otherwise i'm going back to france very very soon so definitely make sure you're subscribed so you're following along and otherwise i will see you here next week on the not even french a youtube channel a bientôt